What's up, fam? Announcement time. Me and my boy, Delicious Brian, are going to start doing a segment where we do readings in the podcast. So if you want us to read, he does geomancy, I do astrology, maybe we'll throw some cards about it. If you have a situation at work, if you have a boo thing that you're feeling or that you're not feeling no more or something like this and you want to ask us a question and see what the oracle has to say about it, then you can go to zambonifong.com slash store. There's an item there that it's free. So you just uh, go through there and like type in your little question and send it our way and we'll be happy to read for you on the air. So Go check that out. It'll be a fun time. And uh, can't wait to hear what you got for us. In the meantime, please enjoy me rambling about some bullshit. Peace and blessings, family, and welcome to another edition of What is the Time, a podcast about personal sovereignty, celestial timing, and living where the getting is good. I am Boy Zamboni, your DJ for the affair. We'll be getting down and won't be coming up for air. And I am here to talk some shit another time. I'm just going to talk about some shit. I don't know. Uh, I have been thinking a lot about um, epistemology and the ways of knowing things recently. And uh, I have given a lot of uh, warnings about uh, like the information landscape. And so uh, I'm just in a moment where I'm thinking about uh, how to navigate it. So I'm just going to dive in here a little bit and see what sort of things I can uh, end up with. I don't know. Um, so if you enjoy the production of this content and you like what I'm doing, you can always go to zambonifong.com. You can get a, a reading there. You can uh, There's all type of things you can do there. You can also send me a tip by Venmo Cash at PayPal at zambonifong. That shit is super helpful. Appreciate all y'all doing that. Also, go check the music out. Press pause on this. Go press play on some of the music real quick. Listen to one tune. I would appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's think with it for a little bit. Let's think about... Um, so there's like uh, propaganda coming at you from every angle, right? Um, I have, in the past, made the claim that uh, everything, all media is propaganda. And <laughs> that is maybe like... Uh, not quite true like propaganda is trying to convince you of something and uh you know so i when i was on the all everything is propaganda train that i was thinking about like uh the, like the content that i produce and this kind of thing like insofar as i'm trying to get you to go to zambonifong.com and buy a reading or send me a tip or uh listen to the music or something like that then this the, all of my content could be considered propaganda as a result of that right um, you know, but like, um, propaganda. And so, you know, there's, there's always a, you're, I don't know, are you ever going to get away from the market incentive? And so that was kind of like the, the point that I had been making with that. And, uh, I have also, uh, cried loudly, about how uh, people need to get their propaganda game together, how uh, you need to um, make sure that your branding is on point for your like self-entrepreneur situation or the way that you represent yourself socially uh, in in situations where you're around people and especially around uh, like networking and community and people you want to like you and this kind of thing. Um, you know, like thinking about propaganda as like sort of like selling yourself and this kind of thing um uh, so like there's uh, i i am with that still i'm really with all that but like um there is a certain kind of uh propagandistic media that is really important to to like sort of zero in on and uh the distinction between that and sort of like talking yourself up at the water cooler or whatever is like that not important to go into really. Um, although I have like maybe backed off of my claim that, uh, everything is propaganda, but, um, 
if we are going to be in, you know, like, it's a fucking election year, and uh, even before it was an election, it's always an election year, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they started this presidential campaign in, like, 2021 or some shit, and uh, it is, it's been a fucking mess the whole time, and that is not to mention all of the uh, media that goes around about uh, disease slash health or any of uh, the gender discourse or the race discourse or any of this shit. Like, uh, there's a there's so much information media going around that it's very easy to be overwhelmed and confused by it. And I posit that that is largely the goal of the corporate entities who run. Uh, things like YouTube and and uh, the media outlets that we typically um, spend our time with. You know, like, cable news was understood, has long been understood to be uh, captured and uh, propagandistic. And, uh, but this is also true of, like, every um, video platform that you can go to on the internet and this kind of thing as well, right? Like, um why do certain people want you to think a certain kind of way? And so, uh, the thing is that there's also good information that is mixed in with all the propaganda. And in fact, you know, uh, so Gordon White came on my podcast a year and a half, two years ago, um, and said something uh, that was really that that was really true. Um, it was like assume that the thing that is being told to you is a lie. Through if you're like watching some kind of propagandistic media, if you're watching the news of any sort, or if you're watching uh, some kind of like talking head uh, break something down for you or something like this, assume that there is a lie in there somewhere. And um, this is th- for him. That was, I mean. <laughs> I don't want to put words in his mouth, but at the moment we were speaking, uh, there was a lot of response to COVID era um, messaging and and sort of like mainstream understanding of uh, disease and health and all this sort of stuff. Um, And so if you like were to follow the uh, directions of the CDC or the WHO or something like that, you would have uh, performed poorly relative to people who thought that shit was like uh the cdc gave you upside down uh or inverted um claims about what was true and what was uh going to be helpful and effective in treating disease and all this sort of stuff like all of that it all ended up wrong and so um there's so there was a certain uh cohort of people who Whatever the CDC, FDA, WHO told them, they did the opposite thing, and they performed better than people who heard what those uh, letter organizations said to them and did the thing. They the they ran into fewer problems than uh, people who listened did, and so uh, this sort of like creates the idea that you could maybe uh, just continue to do that for all time. And this is, I don't know, there's an argument for that for sure. Um, But one of the things that I think is important to think with is that um, if we don't operate from the idea that, like, the CDC is always wrong, but rather the CDC is always lying, then we might get something a little more interesting and closer to... um, something that could be useful. So if we consider the difference between being wrong and lying, like lying is uh, false, but it is uh, the best lies have an element of truth in there, right? There's like a nugget of truth that is at least plausible. At very least, it's plausible, but usually there's some kind of something that was taken from uh, what was understood to be true, and like we can always get into like what is true, right? Like there's a there's a whole mess about that that I really want to get into at some time. Uh, you know, dealing with like the idea of like postmodernist truth being like kind of whatever you think or can argue for, and then uh, this idea of like 
kind of like rationalist truth, which is like uh, the the one true truth that is out there that is maybe not even approachable by uh, anyone with subjectivity. Um, and so that one truth would only be presumably understandable to like the creator or something like that. But like, and then so where does that leave us? And like, that's a that's a whole conversation, right? But let's under let's let's leave that aside for a moment and think with uh, like the idea that there are some true things out there, and and we don't necessarily need to define true. Like, let's just take that as an assumption. And so. Um, like they're the best lies are going to be rooted in truth somewhere there's going to be some kind of true to truth to it and if there's no truth at all to it then that's not a good lie that's not going to convince anyone right or it's not going to convince people who are actually looking at the thing and thinking it through right so when i recommend uh being wary of propaganda campaigns and this sort of thing then uh, one of the main things that I'm doing is I am recommending uh, paying attention to the uh, the information that comes in at all and thinking critically about it. So this is part of the reason why, uh, like, bell hooks style gender discourse um, is really useful. So bell hooks sort of popularized the uh, cultural critique as activism which went on to uh, turn into a movement that, like, is kind of dicey a lot of times. But um, what Bell Hooks was doing as an innovator, as a pioneer of that, uh, like, genre, or that, that sort of, like, ideal, is um, the idea that, like, if you look at the entertainment and the stories that uh, a culture is telling, then... Uh, by noticing what is being said, we can sort of get an idea for what kind of ideas are supposed to be uh, taken in and just like drunk up. You just eat it right up the way that we used to eat up the Disney movies in our youth or this kind of thing, right? Like the, <laughs> there's a lot of ages of people who are, uh, who get into my content, but you, you get what I'm talking about, right? Like as a child, you're just like watching the thing and you're just like, oh yes, all of this, right? And then, uh, you know, like kids these days are going to grow up at some point and be like, man, Blippi was lying his fucking ass off, right? <laughs> like there's going to be a bunch of that sort of stuff. So, um, so there's, so, uh, what I'm arguing here for is like, uh, looking at information as it comes in and just thinking critically about it, right? And being like, hmm, is this thing true? Then there's the idea of like, uh, asking that question legitimately, right? Or like, um, how could that be true? Right. So a lot of people will ask that question, how could that be true? And what they really mean to say is there's no way that that could be true. Right. And one of the things that I always talk about here is uh, no answers, only questions. Right. And so if I really think that, then if I were to ask the question, how could that be true? Then that requires a response. Like, I need to engage that question. Like, could it be possible that the thing that I am being told is true? And under what conditions would that need to be true and this sort of thing, right? So, there's uh, a, that is what critical engagement with that form is. It's just like kind of like paying attention to what kind of information is coming in, scrutinizing it, and then deciding whether or not uh, to incorporate it into the model that we're using to actually move around in the world or if we want to discard it and uh, keep it pushing. So, the thing is, the thing about critique in this way is that it takes so much goddamn time, energy, and attention. It takes so much focus to every time somebody says something that you have to like scrutinize it and you have to like get one of the things that I run into all the time is like I get into the weeds around definitions all the time. Like what does true mean, right? I just did that. Like you get, you run into a place where you're like, oh, like what even, oh, what do I mean by facts? What is, what do I mean by facts? What do other people mean by facts? Are they the same definition and which one are we using in the moment? Oh, it's just like, like all of this kind of thing, right? Run into this all the time with all of the definitions, just get into the weeds with it. And so, um, there's a lot of that kind of like silliness, <laughs> that uh shows up through whenever you're like uh dealing with like cultural critique and this sort of stuff and it just like turns into uh so much inform or like so much effort at all times 
and also you got to go to work and you got to get you know what i mean like there's like too much stuff going on for to to really uh pay attention in that kind of way and so um there are a few ways that we can use to um sort of shorthand that a little bit and so one of the things is how open is the person that you're listening to and so this gets into uh no answers only questions does this person have answers or does it, is this person uh working through a line of inquiry in a particular direction you know um you know there's a certain kind of what i have found personally and feel free to disbelieve me as always right because maybe this is propaganda maybe i want you to buy a reading which i do go to zambonifunk.com buy a reading um but the thing that i have found is that the truthiest people are the ones who disbelieve themselves a fair amount this is the whole like uh the the only thing that i know is that i know nothing right the that kind of principle the the kind of people who uh have certainty about things the people who are like no no no, this is absolutely true this is definitely the way that it's going and uh i've all usually those people will have been like i've been right for a really long time and so this like they they sort of like ride on that being that rightness right um the thing is like they're not that right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that most of the time, you know what I mean? Like they sort of like position themselves in this kind of way where they're like super certain and like, this is the very clear way to do it. And then it's just like people who question their own models are the ones who update them because they're like, well, I am mostly an idiot. I have been mostly an idiot my whole life. And so if I assume that it's possible for me to be wrong, then I can notice when I'm being wrong about things and update the model accordingly, right? Oh, uh, oh I, I thought that thing. I used to think that propaganda was the only, was uh, like inherent in all the way that's, ways that people would communicate with each other. And now I'm like backing off of that claim because I'm like, oh, I've like had some time to think about it and like, oh, well, maybe, maybe there are some other ways to approach this idea and this kind of thing, right? Like there's a lot of, um, so there's a lot of uh, questioning the model, one's own model, and that looks lo- that turns into updating, that turns into making things better, improvements along the way, right? It, that doesn't come with certainty and the sort of like, I already know the answer kind of uh, idea about things. So there's that. The other thing that I would think about is legitimately being right about stuff. And uh, so what you can do is you can look at track record. And unfortunately, track record is another thing that does require a fair amount of uh, like time and energy, right? But as you're choosing your news sources, as you're like looking at um, the way that the, the, the kinds of people that you're going to be interacting with, uh, even if it's only passively, you're like listening to them talk about stuff. Um, what kinds of things do they talk about a lot? And how... Um, how have they been about approaching those kinds of topics? You know, like there's a certain sense of um, like when they, when people work through ideas, then are they, are they frequently uh, like guessing good guesses? Especially like early on in a topic, they're like learning about something and they're like, okay, so based on what I already know about the world, then I would think that it'll go this way. And then does that kind of prediction fit what actually happens? And then how many times does that happen over a period of time, right? Like, so somebody who gets things right, just from like base running it through their basic model, somebody who gets things right frequently is going to be somebody who is worth listening to somebody who gets things wrong frequently, but who goes about updating their model accordingly 
is also someone worth listening to. The mostly there's there's so much um, there's so much like finger wagging going on in uh, discursive media right now that and maybe always who knows I don't I don't know I only live now but um, there's something the 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 finger wagging that goes on is really uh like feels like i have a monopoly on truth like the thing that i know is true is so true that it gets rid of your other truth right and so this is a problem because it it leads into that certainty that can become static and static rules will always in a dynamic and changing universe octavia butler said that uh change is god also god is change so (laughs) there's so much to think about there right like the evolutionary process is the thing that is god because there's something selective about it right there's something that's like making decisions about stuff but it does it in this like organic and and sort of like godly kind of way and it is ongoing from the beginning, right? That's like a a necessary uh, element of the creator, if you ask me, or God. Um, So with with capital G God. Um, So things are always changing. And so a static model will never work. Anytime you have static rules about things, then it's never going to always be true. There's always going to be an outlier. There's always going to be an exception to the rule um, or... um, or the, your rule is going to have to be super general. And uh, once it gets general that way, then you're, you do better with like metaphor and symbolism and this kind of thing. Which is, remind me to get back to that. You just like, <laughs> you people who are in the future, remind me to get back to this thing about uh, uncertainty. But where was I going here? <laughs> I feel like I've been rambling for a while. I'm, like, not doing a good... I didn't uh, script this one, so I didn't, uh, like, even write down notes about what I wanted to talk about. I've just been thinking about it for a long time and thinking about the ways to get through uh, solid information. And so I'm, like, kind of... I'm not really going anywhere. But uh, it's it's an interesting thought exercise for me. So thank you for being here with me. So saying that uh, static rules are always going to fail you, right? So you need a dynamic model. So you need to be able to uh, be wrong lots of times, but update your model. Then the way that you know that the model has been updated is that you start getting things more right. You know what I mean? (laughs) So um, let's get back to this uh, uncertainty idea here. So one thing that is important to uh, sort of think with is as we're sort of trying to ascertain truth from things, there's a kind of uh, uncertainty that we need to be comfortable with, right? There's a kind of, um, you know, and that's the thing that is like, okay, well, I know that I'm going to be wrong about stuff, right? And so a lot of, there, there's, a, mm, there's an instinct to be like, oh, well, I know the stuff now because maybe some kind of teacher or some kind of authority figure like made it true. And so I can sign up for a team and there's a kind of certainty in that that like comforts me in the face of uh, the chaotic uncertainty. Right. But when you're in a place where you can be with the uncertainty for a little while, then that can open up new ways of thinking about things or introduce better options than you might have otherwise um, had available to you. So one of the... um, So I've been listening to uh, the Dark Horse podcast a lot recently, and uh, this lady on there, Heather Hying, is... uh, so so very rigorous and like big science energy on this lady right like uh they these folks they don't think that uh they're they're functionally atheist and uh they like don't think that astrology is real and uh like this kind of thing like very very sort of like mainstream scientist uh rational thinking um by mean mainstream i don't mean politically but i mean sort of like uh separation of church and state uh, kind of thinking, right? And so, uh, anyway, but 
that doesn't stop them from being being brilliant. That's the the important thing, right? Like I have these like major disagreements with them, and uh, they r- keep running up a- against great ideas and, and like largely not seeing what they are. But um, so Heather Hying has uh, made this great point one time, where she was playing Wordle. And um, one of the things that they do, so so Wordle is this game where um, if you, so it's a New York Times game, and you it, it's a five-letter word, and you have to guess what the word is. And so you uh, make a guess, and then it'll tell you which of the letters you got right. And so if you got a right letter in the wrong spot, then it'll give you a certain color, and if you get the uh, wrong letter entirely, it'll give you a different color. And if you got the right letter in the right spot, it'll give you a probably green light. And so, I, clearly, I don't play this game. <laughs> Heather Hying plays this game, and uh, she she mentioned this strategy, which is that so once you uh, so in your first guess, if you get a couple of letters right, then you're likely to guess words with letters in that configuration. What can then happen is you can get stuck in what is called a crap trap. My friend uh, at the job um, mentioned the crap trap to me. She plays World 2. But it's this, uh, you can get it wrong by guessing only words that have those configuration, but there are more words than uh, you have guesses. And so you you just guess them and you just guess wrong and so you don't get it right ever. That's a problem that can show up here that can be solved by guessing a different word entirely on your second guess. So your first guess, you got some letters right and you know what those letters are then you guess a different word entirely in order to knock out some other possibilities like okay so what are some of the letters that i didn't get right right like i got a bunch of letters wrong here so let's just try some other letters right so in doing that you make it sure that you don't get it right on your second guess right because you are because you guess a word that doesn't have any of the letters that you know are right and so you know for a fact the second guess is going to be wrong in doing that in being with that uncertainty for a little while you can actually gain more information that can then set you up to win on your third guess out of out of 5 you get 5 total guesses before you uh fail the game so um on your third guess, you can you may be in better position because your second guess gave you information that uh, that you didn't have and that wouldn't have come to you if you had guessed only words that had uh, letters in the correct configuration that you um, guessed the first time. So that's a really interesting idea to me, the idea of like uh, being with that kind of uncertainty, being just kind of like surfing the edge and just being like, okay, you know what, like, let's try some wrong stuff. Let's go in a direction that I know is wrong for a minute and see what I turn up with. What happens if I go in that direction for a little while, right? And so this is this can sometimes I think it's so I if we're thinking finger waggy here right um, there is on some of these uh, questions that don't necessarily have a right answer you know like on uh, political questions and this kind of thing you know what I mean like there's a we're in a spot right now politically and then like what's the best move forward from here well it's like there are a lot of different things we could do in a lot of different areas and in a lot of different ways. And so which one, like there's no right answer to that sort of thing. Right. And so, and this is true about a thought landscape as well. Like how do we come to ascertain truth or like know what is, even if it's not true, it's actionable, actionably true. Um, this kind of thing. So it might be useful to go in a wrong direction for a while or in the case of uh, politics, maybe listen to somebody who is uh, in str- who with whom you are in strong disagreement. At very least, you remember why you are in strong disagreement. You can run down because, like, 
a lot of times motherfuckers be having a point. You know what I mean? Or they'll ask you a question or bring up a, a perspective that you hadn't necessarily thought of to run through your own model, right? And so then you have to be like, okay, hmm, hmm, maybe, hmm, what are we dealing with here? And then if you stick with your model that you had before, then at very least you have encountered a thing and been like, okay, well, here's how that would work based on what I'm thinking, based on my uh, belief that, uh, you know, astrology is going to work or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, and then somebody hits you with a, like, but what if, uh, what if the flat earth, you know, <laughs> and the, and it's a, and it's really a disc and it's like, okay, well, uh, the retrogrades still happen. So like, I don't, I don't know what you mean. Like, how's it, how's this disc going to work this way? You know, like this kind of thing. I, there was a one time that happened to me one time. <laughs> so I was like called to justify astrology by a flat earther in a sauna. I be getting in, in that sauna, like get once the, once the sweat starts coming out and everybody's like feeling vulnerable, then like you can get into some heavy hitting shit. And uh, flat earthers have approached me maybe four times, five times, something like this. Like these flat earthers, they think I'm on the squad. And really, if they would give me, like, I always, I always let them make their case. Their case always sucks. I wish it didn't suck. If they would give me something to work with, I would be here for it. But like, I don't know how you're going to get around these spheres, man. Like spheres everywhere. But <laughs> anyway, so what I'm saying here is uh, I listen to them. Because maybe they've got some, maybe they've got a point. Maybe they've got a model that uh, I don't understand. Maybe they're, maybe they're onto something, you know? And so, uh, in order to, but before I had, uh, got, been approached by flat earthers, I hadn't run astrology through that model before. And I hadn't, I hadn't run like that. Nobody had asked me that question and been, and like had to justify it. Right. And so in, uh, engaging that conversation in an open way with an uncertain mindset and a mindset toward moving in a direction of questioning, then like I came to reinforce the model that I already had. Or alternatively, there are plenty of times when like uh, people have, you know, like um, I am historically a leftist. I have like an anarchist tattoo here. And uh, every once in a while, conservatives be having points, like more than every once in a while, even like motherfuckers be having points and be like, all right, well, shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the, and so like not it, as soon as if you like, a, if you get on a team, then like now you, now we're really, that's a, that's a social dynamic more than it is a dynamic around like, uh, how are we going to engage with information or how are we going to, uh, make truth or meaning out of information. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if you're on a team, you're definitely making meaning out of information. Uh, and I think it just leads to poor outcomes. <laughs> I think we can get better outcomes as a people at large, but then also as individuals, you know what I mean? Like, I don't necessarily need to... Uh, I'm an American citizen or whatever, but like, I don't need America to come along with me on this. You know what I mean? Like, uh, this is more of that uh, Ursula Le Guin, uh, how you play is what you win business. You know what I mean? Like, the, like I can uh, play the game. I can be me. I can live life as me all throughout time. And I don't have to, you know, like, I. this is, uh, this is also that argument for piracy. Like, I can... I, <laughs> I think about this all the time when I'm walking around because uh, I live in a community where people are very polite with the uh, stoplights. Like uh, pedestrians will wait for a light to before they cross the street, uh, even though it's a fairly small town. There's not that much traffic in at least in the like uh, mostly walked areas, like the uh, like the downtown area where there's you know a bunch of businesses you could walk to and this kind of stuff. Um, there's like not that much traffic. It's not it's not New York City. I lived in New York City for a while, and you know like you <laughs> you should be aware of traffic in New York City. Um, <laughs> did I ever tell you about the time when uh, I was doing? Uh, I was like riding my bike 
And uh, it was the first time me and some of the crew did a somebody else's problem field, which is um, an invisibility spell that we were doing because we were paranoid. <laughs> and uh, so I was like doing a uh, this invisibility spell and biking through the streets of New York, New York City, and I was. I, I made it like two blocks and like swerved a couple of times. It was like, I need to stop doing invisibility magic while I am in traffic. This is a terrible idea. Anyway. Um, oh, so the thing I think about all the time in my uh, community of like very polite pedestrians is like, I can walk in any direction that I want to. Like, I am not limited to the sidewalk. I am not limited to right angles. I'm not, like, if I, my legs work pretty good, I'm in pretty good shape, I can climb stuff, you know what I mean? Like, the other day I was on a trail and then uh, made the wrong turn, and the, the other trail was up here, and I was like, I'm just going to climb up there and get on the right path, you know what I mean? Like, I can do whatever I want. And so, um, this is true about information also. This is true about the way that we can live our lives, right? So um, if how you play is what you win, then you have lots of options for uh, the way that you play the game, the way that you live your life, that um, you know you don't necessarily need the whole society to come along with you. Um, and so... You know, the the way that if you're on a team, you, like, have to do... You have to be with the team. You know what I mean? So, uh, being in a place where we can uh, assume that... I'm not really sure when it comes to regulatory capture and uh, governmental capture and this kind of thing. Uh, I'm not really sure to what extent there is some kind of, uh, like, collusion going on between rent-seeking elites, we could say. Um, or market incentives that create uh, the bullshit that we currently live in. You know which bullshit I'm talking about. I'm not sure... My guess is that both is going on, and I'm not sure where you put it. Not sure where you put it at all. If I know anything about humans, it's that uh, we're pretty dumb as a people. And so, the idea that, like, shit is always going right for rent-seeking elites doesn't track to me. Even if we assume that there are archons or something like this, there's like some 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 kind of supernatural thing going on. Like, sure, whatever. I'm like not really with the archons these days, but like, um, I'm I, I like motherfuckers mess up all the time. So this makes me think that like market forces are are like a big deal here, right? So if it's conspiracy and collusion then we can assume ill intent. But if it's from, like, the people who are, like, making it happen, they, like, want to make you into a slave or something like that, you know? Um, because they, like, think it's fun. <laughs> yeah, we, we want to watch it burn, you know? Like, that's the kind of, like, thing. Or if it's market forces, then most people, like, market forces are people trying to, like, take care of their families and shit and i know somebody's gonna like point at some type of billionaire who's like or greed and like but like it starts in the spot where it's like i would like to stop being broke and so i am going to get some money and then it turns into a game where you're like trying to get more money and so like that it's it, what i'm saying is market incentives leave us in a place where we can assume good intent from most people. Most people are like trying to do their best. And so if most people are trying to do their best and they arrive at a wildly different conclusion than you do, then there's a great opportunity for hearing a perspective and being able to update one's own model. And then as we update the model, and the model gets better because it makes fewer mistakes. Or, 
makes different mistakes. Talked about that before. Not the same, makes different mistakes and not the same mistakes. Your model gets better as a result of this. Then, so, you don't have to convince anybody. You know what I mean? Like, you can be, like, through that interaction, like, I don't, I don't ever think that I have convinced people who I, well, am listening, <laughs> listening to on YouTube and shit like that, you know what I mean? Like, of course I'm not convincing those people, those people don't know I exist, but, uh, like, I can learn things that improve the way that I live all the time, simply because I have engaged with a perspective that is outside of my own, and maybe I incorporate it in, or maybe I can rebuff it, but either way, I have gotten better at being in the information landscape. And that's what we really need to get good at. We really need to get good at working with the information landscape because we are in the information age. We are in the age of air. We are, it is, or the era of air. We are going to be here for the rest of our lives. And so we need to figure out what's going on. I have been thinking recently that I need to uh, deep dive on aerodynamics. Just like, how does air move? Because um, this seems like, uh, the metaphor is likely going to be likely going to give a lot. Maybe I should study ornithology. Uh, you know, if uh, we think of the air as a space that can be occupied by an organism, and so if you can figure out how to occupy that space, then uh, you can have an advantage that will uh, get you, you and your people into the future of the world. Um, then the niche like uh the the niche could be considered a vessel and then the organism is going to go in and take the shape of the niche right and so uh birds and other flying organisms probably at least in part take the shape of air probably the wings especially are gonna like be the shape of air right so um I don't know. <laughs> if you got an ornithology connect or if you got an aerodynamics connect and you want to put me in touch, I would love to hear from you. Uh, I think I'm done rambling. I have, <laughs> this has been very meandering and I don't know if I've gotten anywhere useful, but uh, thank you for being here with me. I love you. And uh, don't forget to go listen to some music. Check you on the flip. Peace and blessings.